Hey, it's Joel. I was on a press tour. No joke. I went to the UK for my first time. Siemens invited me out to their materials solutions business in Worcester in the, in the UK. And it was, it was fantastic. And I got to learn about what they do. And I want to tell you about that. But also, I negotiated a worldwide model release. This little Christmassy model that you're going to get to print at home. Let's talk about it right here on 3D Printing Nerd. Uh, there you are. You know, a press trip is not something that I've gone on before. And this this was my first time. Not only was this my first press trip, this was my first time in the UK. So I got to take a Lufthansa plane across the pond and I was comfortable because I had a neck pillow on. And once I landed in, uh, where'd I go? I took it to Frankfurt. And then from Frankfurt, I took it to Birmingham. And then a driver picked me up in Birmingham and we drove out to Worcester and got to the hotel, which was really great. I actually found out my friend Sarah, Sarah Gerke was there. Uh, and I met this nice new gentleman. His name is Rupinder. And uh, we got to go to dinner, hang out, meet the people from Siemens. It was amazing. I was like, wow, being part of the press. This is fun. I like this. So the next day they, they took us to Materials Solutions, the, the business there. It was weird. It was like there was a building on this side and there was British pastures and just green grass on the other side. It was like, it felt like it was the middle of nowhere, but I don't know. It was fantastic. We go there, we go into this meeting room and then they, they have these bags for us and they have a slideshow because for a press tour, they're just talking about their business and what they do. As far as the business goes, they, they gave us some really awesome slides and I actually snapped photos of nearly all of them with my phone. It's really cool because here's one of the things they said that really stood out to me. They don't do 3D printing. They do additive manufacturing. 3D printing for us, like you and me and most of the people out there, we have our desktop printers and we print an elf or a moai head and we go, ooh, look at the pretty elf or ooh, look at the pretty moai head, but not at materials solutions. They do additive manufacturing where there's design, implementation, iteration, they call it digital twinning and testing and sintering this powder in the machines and then recycling the powder and then shipping it off. And so it was interesting to hear from a multi-billion dollar global business how it's like 3D printing, but it's all of it. It's the manufacturing side of it. So I thought that was kind of cool to hear. And I know that there are more and more people actually turning 3D printing into manufacturing. Just look at Spectra 3D, look at Out of Darts, look at Voodoo Manufacturing, look at anybody uh, that is still around for 3D hubs, I guess. That's, they're, they're, they're manufacturing. So it's really cool to see this idea that, that we know of of manufacturing going up to the next level. After the slideshow, they took us on a tour of the facility and it's this very large, open, clean facility. I can't even stress clean enough. It's manufacturing, but it's clean. It was weird to see, especially when they're using all these powders, these, these powders that have to be centered together, and it was clean. It's just clean. On the tour, they showed us all of these machines that were million dollar machines, all with one to four lasers on them, and all were DMLS or SLM, and uh, SLM is selective laser melting and DMLS being direct metal laser sintering. These lasers fire down into a powder of titanium or steel or something and create a part. And when you, <laughs> it's interesting, when you have multiple lasers on a machine, it's like having, it's like having a stacker with multiple heads going at the same time and it creates the parts up to, well, I guess, faster, four times faster. And it was funny, there was a story they said where it was actually exponentially faster to do eight models on a print bed instead of nine because when they have four lasers, eight models, the math works out. But a ninth model means a laser has to do extra time. So it really added to it. And so part of the manufacturing process is finding the the perfect recipe of models and lasers and time to be able to create as many parts as possible at a high quality bar. Once the tour was done, and I'm gonna be honest, the tour was, it was, it was great. Uh, I, I could have spent all day just looking at these wonderful machines, but more importantly, let's get to what's in the bag. So in the bag, we had lots of various cool little things, but um, my favorite thing was probably, was probably this. was this. 
and it does say Merry Christmas from Materials Solutions. And inside we have this Christmassy little bauble. And what's really cool is this is metal. This is metal printed on one of their SLM machines. It's got a little Christmas tree on the inside in this lattice pattern, and then it comes to a little tip. There's a hole right here that you can put some wire through and you can hang it as an ornament on a tree or a bauble. I mean, you could, uh, if I had pierced ears, I suppose, or maybe a necklace, or um, you could um, be one of those cool kids and have one of those little phone baubles. No, no, it was really cool. I, I've never held one of these in my hand before, something that had just been laser centered and the weight was surprising. I mean, I've, I've handled metallic things, but to see this, to know it's 3D printed and then to have it be metal, it, it blows my mind. What's really cool though, this was part of a competition and Siemens UK put out to the employees to design something in their CAD software and then two winners would be picked and they would be printed as gifts to give out. And there was one that I didn't get because they weren't giving that out, but someone had drawn a sketch and the Siemens engineers took that and the, de the design was made in, in the 3D modeling space and then they, they printed it and it was, it was really cool. But this one, however, what was really great when I was talking to Phil Hatherly about this was he said the designer was there. His name is Dan Tyree and I got to talk to Dan. I got to find out what modeling environment he was using. It ends up he's using their CAD environment. I was asking about why he designed it, how he designed it. It was really, really cool. And it was great talking to Dan. He was excited about this and then Dan said we could share it. We actually checked with everybody, even though this was a Siemens internal model, but uh, thanks, to, thanks to me being over there and some friendship across the pond, they released it. They released this model and you could print it yourself because there will be a link in the description. In fact, I printed it, here it is. I printed it on my Prusa i3 Mark III using Strong Hero 3D filament and it turned out great. This was at 1x scale, 100%. Great, right? Oh, but there's more. This one I printed at 250. No, shoot. This one I printed... <laughs> this one I printed at 200% scale. And it's with the Ariana Plast, Ariana Grande filament. Uh, it's their red, which looks fantastic. And I printed this on the CME CNC Artemis 300. I did a great job. Oh, <laughs> I didn't stop there. You didn't think I stopped there, did you? This is 250% scale. This is printed in the Enviro Engineering carb-loaded PET on my Ultimaker 2 Plus with the Ruby nozzle. And uh, I love it. I love it. The look, the feel, uh, it's just, it's, it's this matte black wonderfulness. I love it. You're probably thinking to yourself, I see what you did, Joel. 100%, 200%, 250%. Obviously, the next uh, iteration in this sequence is going to be 700% scale. Roll the footage. So this was five top layers, five bottom layers, 5% infill, three perimeters, and, and, oh, sadness. It's not complete. <sighs> I thought I had enough time. I thought I had enough filament. I thought it was gonna work, and then it didn't. It just didn't, I ran out of filament. A filament sensor on the Artemis would be perfect, but we don't have that. What we do have is this model printed at, would have been 700% scale, but it's it's not exactly. But you can see the size there. That's pretty cool. This is filamentum uh, crystal green, crystal clear PLA. I love this filament. I love the look of it. I love how it kind of shines and shimmers, but uh, it is not complete. However, it's not really that bad of a thing, right? I mean, I could just put it like that. Maybe put a Red Bull on top of it. There we go. But listen, 
Uh, Siemens did release this model, Dan Tyree, Siemens, those nice people there, they did release it. There's a link in the description. It's a very Christmassy kind of Christmas bobble, a Christmas themed model. And I, along with Siemens, would love for you to print it yourself. I would love to see small prints. I would love to see large prints, maybe wide prints. I would love to see multicolor prints. You know, that Christmas tree on the middle, maybe someone can section that out as a separate model and then the outside and the inside could be different colors. Perhaps someone could figure out a way to embed LEDs in it so it lit up as it was hanging. I would love to see all of those. And when you do print it, take a picture of it, take a video of it, share it on social media and use the hashtag SiemensMSL. Siemens MSL, that's the hashtag. And also tag uh, Siemens UK. I'll put all the information down in the description, but free model, Christmas time, you know, a lot of people wait till the last minute to print some gifts. That's an easy print right there. But really any one of these overnight would be, would be great. You could print it in your favorite filament. You could present it as a gift. Uh, put a little string through there, be able to hang it from a, from a string. Maybe customize it, maybe add some words or text to it. I don't know. but. Free model, Christmas model, go print it and have yourself a wonderful Christmas season and a happy holidays and a happy new year and whatever else I need to say. But that's it for now. Hey, thanks for watching and a big thanks for Siemens for bringing me out to the UK. It was my first trip out there. I really hope to get back and I hope that this isn't the last press trip that I see. Be kind, be awesome. I love you guys. As always, high five. High five. <gasps> Ha 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 ha!